Well guys, in today's video, we're gonna discover how my everyday carry system in 2022 has been completely turned upside down. Cause I went from living in a home and going to the office to living in a travel trailer and the world is my office. Yeah, folks, and uh, you'll have to forgive the shades. Uh, the afternoon sun is pretty intense here, but I am so excited for this 2022 EDC update video because it has really been a really crazy, awesome, exciting, and very different year having now been on the road. And in this video, we're gonna look at kind of three applications, utility of the gear, but also uh, some gear that is just convenient and then some gear that is for protection. We're gonna look at it from kind of three different perspectives. And with having such a small compact space and very limited capability, I've really had to hone my skills being in new and different environments from the beach to the woods to the desert and back and forth again uh, as we travel around America has really made me have to hone certain tools and certain gear items to do certain things. Now, a great place to start is with multi-tools. Every EDC system, I believe, should have grounded in the center of it some form of a multi-tool of some kind. It can be as simple as your basic Swiss Army knife like this Cadet, something nice and flashy like this Gerber center drive. And then of course you've got your Leatherman tools where you can start off with kind of the light duty budget friendly stuff, say like the Skeletool or the Bond or all the way up to the heavy duty premium, say like the Surge and the Wave. But in this pouch resides the best multi-tool for my scenario of living on the road and using it just about every single day. And I'm talking about the Leatherman Charge Plus with G10 handle scales. And there are a few things that make this one stand out above all other tools really that I've tested and used here on the channel over the years and used in deployment of EDC systems in the past is first off the G10 handles where most multi-tools are clunky. They kind of have sharp angles. They're definitely heavy um, and just not very ergonomic. These G10 handles really do uh, not only lighten it up a little bit, but then give you a lot more traction so you can grip it better and just feels warmer to your hand. It's not like you're holding like a metal pipe. Uh, and then uh, the rounded angles because of the G10 make it much more comfortable than your standard multi-tool. And so those uh, are a huge selling point to me. This particular one is the natural. I got this uh, over at Sportsman Warehouse. Uh, there are a few other higher viz colors as well if you did want to go with that and those will all be in the links for you guys below so i, I was willing to invest like 180 because this thing is not cheap 180 bucks into this tool because i knew living in an rv and owning an RV, you're always you know, t tweaking something, fixing something. The tool layout really works for me. I can't tell you how many times I use that main S30V uh, blade. And so that's great to have an upgrade over say the 420 and most multi-tools just have a lower steel quality. So this blade gets used a lot. It functions really well. You basically don't even need to carry a secondary pocket knife and it will hold its edge a lot longer. And so for me, when I hit the road, knowing that I was going to have to be using a multi-tool a lot, it was is worth the almost $200 investment to pick up this multi-tool throw in rotation. I can usually carry it this way, but if I know I have a ton of work to do, the pouch with its extra bit kit and two pockets so I can either do an extension or in my case, a Sharpie and a Streamlight EDC flashlight makes it so that I can almost get everything done around the RV with this little pouch on unless it's a really heavy duty repair. But before we move on from the multi-tool discussion, I would be remiss if I didn't hit on an awesome alternative that not only could save you a bunch of money, but potentially get the same or even more work done than this Leatherman. And that's going with any Swiss Army knife that you might wanna carry. You can pick your poison, whatever flavor you would like and whatever type of tool layout you would like. And then pairing it with a set of Cobra Nye Pecs or Nye Packs, however you say it, adjustable pliers. These come in a lot of different sizes made in Germany. You can get them really compact. And when the Leatherman is fully extended, you can actually see it's a little bit shorter. So it's still very compact. Little button to fully adjust those teeth, move it where you would want to in the head. And you can grab most sized bolts uh, and or nuts with this tool. And they are awesome, extremely well built 
pretty lightweight. Now you gotta pair it with something else because that's just the pliers themselves. But when the Leatherman can't grab onto a certain item and you know tighten it or hold it in place, I go to these and these keep on ticking for me and I've had them in rotation as kind of a backup in the EDC system for a couple years now and love it. But guys, before we go any further in this video, I wanna give a big shout out to today's sponsor. And it's a special shout out because it's the one year anniversary of LA Police Gear being a monthly sponsor here at the channel. And it's awesome because not only have they been hooking you guys, the viewers up for a year now with a 10% off promo code that you guys can get 10% off anything that they carry site wide, but they've just been a really good resource for you guys and for myself to get our hands on gear and equipment that is just really well built from really well known established um, brands say like Magpul and uh, all sorts of other firearm accessories to uh, different types of apparel to gear and packs say from like Vertex and 511 to amazing footwear from Solomon and Merrill just to name a few as well as all kinds of great tools from like Streamlight uh, as well as Leatherman, Sog, Spyderco just I mean it just goes on and on and on the amount of gear that they carry as well as their own well-established brand of LA police gear, apparel, and equipment. So uh, I just encourage you guys throughout this video, many, many of the gear items you're going to see uh, are able to be purchased over on the LA police gear website. We do have that promo code. It's in the link in the description box below. Go check it out. Uh, go see what they got going on. And I know you won't be disappointed with the equipment that you pick up through them. And you're going to get it oftentimes at a cheaper price than just about anywhere else because of that exclusive code for you guys, the viewers. And so with that, let's go ahead and keep on trucking. So illumination is key in any everyday carry system, regardless if it's a little tiny, you know, AAA power flashlight you have on your key ring or a big heavy duty tactical light that you use more in a defensive role. And for us being on the road all the time, we're in new environments. So we're unfamiliar with the area. Oftentimes we're out in the middle of nowhere in the woods camping. So there's no illumination or you're in an RV park that just doesn't have a lot of light. So you need reliable and high output with lots of options and carry options, uh, illumination. And so for me, I'm really excited because I not only get to show you what I've been carrying, but it's an update on reliability. And it's this LA Police Gear FLF1 1000 lumen flashlight. Now we did a review on this uh, several months ago. I have now had it for over six months and it has been a daily carry and daily companion for me with no signs of stopping. And it's kind of crazy what this is providing. And I mean, I have so many flashlights. I have uh, a few Surefires. I have plenty of Streamlights. I have tons of Phoenix. I have Nightcore. I have everything under the sun. But for some reason, I keep gravitating to this. And I think it's because one, I know if it ever gets lost or the kids grab it, I'm not gonna cry because it only costs 35 to $40 on average. Um, and on top of that, it not only gives me a turbo thousand lumen power punch, but then it also has high, medium, low, and a strobe feature. So all of those things, and it came with a rechargeable CR123 battery, which is fantastic. So I'm not having to constantly truck around different um, batteries that I'm constantly recharging and having to use. Uh, so I can just plug this in at the end of the day and it recharges itself and you're good to go. Um, reversible pocket clip and a magnetic tail cap as well. So I can hands free it in the middle of the night when I'm having to do something, uh, or I can attach it to the bill of a hat. And so all of those features gives it the ability to not only play a just illumination role of taking you know Tommy for a walk and walking through the RV park, but it gives me a sense of security with that strobe, the super high output, and even the recessed bezel that I could use it as a last ditch self defense tool if I had to. And it just, it doesn't break the bank. And for six months, over six months, I got it in August of 2021. It's now February of 2022. And it's been a daily companion and has no signs of slowing down. So this has really been just a reliable uh, main illumination tool for me and my family for the past six months. So one of the staple bread and butter aspects to this channel is knife reviews, both fixed blades and pocket knives. I love them, they're a passion of mine, and I think that every EDC setup needs to have a good established pocket knife and or fixed blade or both, depending on you know your scenarios, what you're doing. And so I have a few solutions here that I've really landed on that I love that I've been using extensively. Now I'm always testing and carrying different stuff and it's fun, but at the end of the day, if you were to ask me what are like the ones that you're just using nonstop that you love carrying, 
screen. The first off that I introduced to you guys last year at the end of the year is the Benchmade Adamus, now redesigned with an updated steel. Uh, it's got a loop over pocket clip. The crew wear steel is amazing. Uh, I love it. I rarely have to tune it up and it just has a beef to it and a heft that I've really started to enjoy. Now, when I was you know, bouncing around town, going to the office, a much more lighter, slimmed down pocket knife was the way to go. But now out in the outdoors all the time, uh, doing different things, just using the tool a lot more, a bigger, beefier handle, less need to resharpen, and just a big, broad blade has really made sense to me and works a lot. And so I love the axis lock action as well, so it makes it easy for me to open and close one-handed. Uh, and the uh, carry option with that pocket clip as well as a nylon pouch if I needed it uh, gives me just so much variety and so many options that it's really hard to say no to this pocket knife most of the time when uh, I'm grabbing one to use for the day. So uh, this one is not cheap though. It's going to cost you, you know, over $200. They do have a mini that I am not a fan of. I think it's too small and too compact. And they do have an auto if you're into autos and you want to invest that type of money. But it's a pretty big, large pocket knife and it's very expensive. So it, what if I'm in an area where I need to restrict the size of the blade and or I just don't want to lose an over $200 pocket knife? Well, in that case, I've been talking about these for a couple years now, guys. The Buck 110, 112 Slim Select Series are awesome. Still made right here in America with 420 high carbon. Still really inexpensive. You can easily snag either size for under $40. Uh, very lightweight, very slim, ambidextrous, so righties and lefties can easily enjoy the tool. And they just work. The blade shape, the design is iconic and classic. The ergonomics are simple and easy to use and are, is great because I can use it hiking and you know doing food prep as well as just general utility around the campsite. And because of the smaller under three inch version with the 112 and the over three and a half inch version with the 110, it gives you a lot of variety to choose from. And if you were to lose it, it's not a huge deal because you didn't spend over $200 on the tool. So this is a great option if you're looking to kind of start out an everyday carry system and you don't have say over $200 to throw at a pocket knife, this is a great place to start because you're getting you know American made, good quality, fully ambidextrous and all the things I've shared with you. Now, what about fixed blades? In the past, I would not put a fixed blade in my everyday carry system. It just wasn't needed around the property and around the house uh, and going to the office. Now, running around in the woods more often than not, going to the beach, going to environments where a pocket knife maybe isn't always the best uh, solution and a fixed blade's durability, uh, less moving parts and um, options just makes a little bit more sense. The one that I've been in love with for a while now is the Overland from TJ Schwartz. Uh, he designed this tool. It comes with MagnaCut, which in some ways I would almost put better than Crewwear. And Crewwear and MagnaCut I would put in that same ballpark of like my favorite steels right now. So it has an amazing steel on it that is just epic. Very ergonomic, like 3.8 inches overall just super well done tool. So many different options you can choose from. The Kydex sheath is phenomenal, so it's very easy to conceal, very easy to carry on your body in different you know, setups and different scenarios. Now this little bad boy is a big investment at about $300, but it's something that can really grow with you. And uh, we just recently did a video on it. It's awesome, you can check that out. So having some kind of IFAC individual first aid kit, I believe is essential to an everyday carry system. Now you can start off as simple as getting a SWAT T tourniquet kit uh, and using that either as a compress or in a life or death situation as a tourniquet. It's very compact, about the thickness of a wallet and could easily fit in any pocket. You could rubber band with a ranger band, uh, something as simple as a uh, cellox coagulant bandage to help with arterial wounds. Uh, and then you can go from there. Now, I am by no means a medical expert, so do all of this at your own risk, know your information. The best solution would be to get a little bit of training. That invested day, it'll, I believe, be well worth it because I have had to use a SWAT T tourniquet on a buddy of mine who nicked an artery when we were out camping. We had to drive 45 minutes to an ambulance and the ambulance had to drive another 45 minutes to the hospital. And I had a SWAT T on me. I was able to put it on my buddy while we drove. And uh, if he had not had that, the doctor said he probably would have bled out. So I, I fully believe in having something on you that could stop a life and death you know, bleed if necessary. And just having basic training on how to do that is better than nothing. And for us on the road, we're always going around, not knowing maybe where the closest um, 
uh, hospital is. We may have to maintain stuff for ourselves for quite a while. We have little boys that are always getting into something. Uh, so we have you know, a medical kit in the door of the RV. We have one on the headrest of the truck and one within about 20 feet of us at any one t given time uh, in our everyday carry packs that my wife and I carry around with us when we travel and go and do whatever we're doing. And so this one just happens to be a little bit more souped up that I can attach to my belt, throw in my pack, um, or if necessary, just pull out the SWAT tee and just throw in my pocket if that's all uh, I, I can do, you know, because I'm going into a certain scenario. So uh, what this will have is everything from a Cellox bandage that will stop um, blood flow, that SWAT tee that I talked about, a few other larger bandages. Uh, it will have a little boo-boo kit in there, you know, with some band-aids and just some other simple things, tweezers, stuff like that. Uh, and then I will also have some antihistamine, which is good for, um, you know, swelling of any kind, um, bee stings, those type of things, uh, allergic reactions, and uh, know how to use the equipment that you have. But I think having something like that and what I carry uh, with me are these items, and these have really proved to be a reliable safety net in an emergency situation. So welcome to the after dark portion of the video where we're gonna talk about personal protection in firearms. And so I gotta do this inside the RV uh, late at night so that my neighbors don't freak out on me. And I have two firearms I'm gonna show you. One has been in the collection and in my EDC setup for a long time. One is new for this past year and I'm super happy that I have it. And it's my 44 Magnum wheel gun, the Smith & Wesson 6. 29. This is a 4.1 inch 44 Magnum slash 44 Special firearm, uh, six rounds in it. And uh, this guy's going to weigh like 41 ounces. So it's a beast, stainless steel through and through. Uh, but I picked it up last year before we headed out on the road because of two reasons. One, it's California and Massachusetts compliant. So basically, as we travel the country with all sorts of different firearm rules and regulations, I wanted at least one, if not several of my firearms to be compliant with all of the different rules that may be out there, especially in the more stringent um, of states. And so this uh, does that for me so that I can carry this in just about every state in the union and I'm not gonna have an issue. The 44 Magnum caliber, because of hanging out in the West this whole past uh, summer, going into Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, in big game country gave me a level of just peace of mind and security where I was hiking on trails where, you know, grizzly bear warning signs and moose and all kinds of stuff was a regular um, thing on these trails. Now, thankfully, I never ran into anything like that. Uh, I had my bear spray on top of the 44, but I wanted a large wheel gun to be able to protect myself. Uh, on the trail when I was hiking. So that is why I picked this up initially in those two reasons. Just to show you, I forgot to do that earlier. Totally clear, cleared firearm, no, no rounds in there. Uh, great rubberized ergonomic handle that really fits my large size hands very nicely. And for a big uh, revolver, it's a fun gun to shoot. And that brings us into our next one, which is the Smith & Wesson Shield. This is the original model. I bought this right after it first came out. Uh, I know they have updates now, like the 2.0 or even maybe past that. We've probably put four or 5,000 rounds through this thing at this point, and it's fun to shoot for a compact pistol. Never had a jam, never had an issue. Run it on a CYA Kydex holster. Really good. I'm gonna clear that for you. So there's nothing in there, nice and clear. Uh, and, and it just works. It's worked for years for my wife and I. I have one, she has one. Uh, and that is what we carry with us as personal protection in a concealed carry format. And so you don't always have to go break the bank. You know, I think I paid like 320 for it. I don't know what it's going for now for the very like base original design. And uh, you know, that is a great option to get comfortable with and to have on you in an EDC everyday carry scenario where you're wanting it on your body all the time. So I alluded to this idea of items that are convenient and add a level of convenience to our lives that maybe other items wouldn't. So I'm gonna share some of these items with you. And one is a huge update. I have never owned a smartwatch in my life until this Christmas. And over the Christmas holiday, I got myself a Garmin Instinct for three main reasons. Have a step counter to make sure that I could hit my minimum 10,000 steps a day to just keep a healthier lifestyle. 
uh, heart rate monitor as well to make sure I was having a good heart rate and certain uh, activities that I was doing. And then finally, having the ability to not only acquire GPS coordinates, but have a compass on my wrist at all times. And then if it was bomb proof, like my G-Shocks that I've been rocking for years, that would just be icing on the cake. And after a bunch of feedback from you guys over on Instagram, so I appreciate all of you who commented. And if you wanna be uh, more involved and just see up and coming projects, Instagram is a great way to follow along and have different discussions. Um, and you guys suggested the Instinct from Garmin. I've now had it for two months and I love it. Uh, I basically have transitioned to it fully. I haven't put a G-Shock on since. Uh, I still have them in rotation and they're great to have if you need a backup or you just don't want a smartwatch. I would highly recommend G-Shocks and or the Illuminary series from uh, Casio. But this guy uh, is fantastic. It was well worth about $150 that I invested into it. They do have a solar option that does help with longevity of life. I can easily get over a week of usage with this guy before I would need to recharge it and it recharges in like 30 minutes flat. So uh, very, very useful uh, and it's something that has made my life better not only in the health department and keeping myself healthy but also in the navigation and location department that I wanted as a backup to other forms of GPS uh, coordinates and things that I have. Uh, another aspect is uh, polymer, you know, uh, silicone kind of based rings. Uh, I've always had a metal cobalt ring, um, that a wedding band for um, my whole life, the last 10 years that I've been married. Uh, and it's worked great. But what I was discovering is when I had my window down, I was actually scratching my truck um, while I was uh, driving. I went with a Groove ring. I actually got a few different brands and I really landed on Groove uh, and it seems to work really well, fits my hand well. They have so many different colors. Uh, I think it is kind of silly that you're having to pay like $30, $35 for a little piece of rubber, but uh, it has been working. It doesn't cause any stink or anything like that. And is, if you're looking for the synthetic polymer, you know, uh, wedding bands, they definitely seem to be from what I'm experiencing, one of the better options. Uh, you'll pay a little bit more, but they seem to work out well. The one thing I noticed is I did have to go down a whole size because they flex and stretch. Um, whereas uh, the sizing on my metal ring is one size up. So that was something that I kind of had to work through. But other than that, great. So continuing in that convenience level, you know, things that just make life a little easier uh, are two items that I just love. And I've been trusting long before you ever heard about them here at the channel. Then I told you about them, then they became a sponsor here. And today they are not sponsoring the content on this video. I just wanna share that about it with you because I trust it and I use it and it makes my everyday carry, it's, they're part of my everyday carry system, but they make it more convenient. And the two uh, aspects of it is the Grip6 minimalistic friction held belts. Uh, I picked these up a long time ago, 100% made in America, all their stuff. Uh, so that's an extra bonus. All kinds of now different options for men and women, diff different thickness levels. If you need more of like a, a classy slim down version, if you want like a big heavy kind of tactical outdoor belt, uh, I carry my firearm on it, no problem with concealed carry. Uh, and I can fully adjust it depending on, um, you know, what type of pants I'm wearing, what type of scenario, uh, because of the, the friction, you know, and how it holds it in place and they never loosened up on me, they rock. So uh, that aspect, and then also their wallets. I've, I, my, I update my wallet, maybe every Every six months but I've had this now for a while and it's my first kind of rigid belt or excuse me rigid wallet because uh, it's aluminum and it's got this little trigger feature that pops up your main cards and it makes it so easy to, to grab and use your cards and then co uh, covered in leather so that it's a little bit more comfortable in your pocket and can carry a couple more uh, cards than just the um, rigid aspect to it. So the, I, what, I was really on the fence. They even showed it to me when I went through the, the factory and I was like, I don't know. And I, I ended up getting one. I used it now and I, I still do. To this day, it's right here in my pocket, on my thigh, um, in my cargo pocket, but I can easily put it in my back pocket or front pocket, no problem. And so uh, both of those have been just awesome and add to uh, the level of convenience in my everyday carry system. Now again, in years past, when it comes to an EDC bag, which will require its own complete video at some point, uh, I've always wanted something that's pretty heavy duty, pretty structured, and could definitely carry like a computer and a tablet and all that type of stuff. But recently, because when I do that, it's more at the RV or I'm going to like the library, it's not like a daily thing. Uh, I've actually gravitated away from more of those kind of slim down, you know, um, office, I don't know how else to describe it, packs, but 
now looking more of like a hiking or adventure pack and using that as my everyday carry bag to carry supplies because we have the kids in tow all the time, like their raincoats, some snacks, a quick med kit, um, you know, things like that. What I've been using now for a few months and that I'm really kind of falling in love with in for that type of scenario is the Mystery Ranch in and out uh, 22 for a few reasons, mainly that it has two exterior pockets that I can put the med kit in, some other things I can get quick access to. I don't have to open the bag to get to. Deploying a med kit quickly is very important. Uh, it did have a water bottle pouch on one side so I could easily carry a water bottle and then other lashing points so that I could put a mono or a tripod for my videography. I could strap it on there if I needed to. Finally, it does have sternum straps that are removable, which is always something I'm looking for. Uh, and they still will go just across my chest. So that's all, you know, a, a bonus for me. And you may be asking yourself, what the heck is this apparati on your water bottle? Well, this is a hard side swig setup. And the concept is this, making any of your hard sided water bottles, Nalgene's, uh, you know, name the brand, and turning it basically into a bladder, a water bladder, if you desire. I have a quick release here. You just pop that sucker off, you take your hose, snap that sucker on and attach and you start drinking just like you would out of a normal bladder. So it gives you this by drinking fluid capability that's just ingenious. And I've really been looking for something like this for a long time. I'm having a lot of fun with it. So uh, you may see some more information on this in the future. There will be a link over to their website. You can kind of check out if you like and see what they got going on. But I think it's a cool uh, adaptive piece that I've been using daily uh, for hydration that is a little bit more possibly versatile than just a dedicated water bladder. Well, guys, there you have it. I hope that this video has been fun and entertaining, but also giving you the data and just information that you need and give you some ideas, some tips, some tricks, some maybe gear items for that either utility, the convenience or the safety part um, and protection part, you know, that you maybe weren't using before that would make sense for you to start looking into and start uh, deploying in your everyday carrier EDC system. So I appreciate you guys so much. I invite you to uh, check out the um, other video popping up, to leave a comment below, ask questions. I love being able to help you guys in the community that we have here in the family at Gideon's Tactical. And again, uh, I invite you to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. See you out there.